Okay, great to be here. Thank you for coming and let's unpack the boss. See if we can switch to the next slot, to the screen. All right, thank you. Cool, so I'm Ilya, I'm co-founder of Near Protocol. Um, we actually been doing this uh, for a few years now and so since last consensus where I was presenting, we've had really amazing growth across the whole ecosystem. It's really awesome to see kind of people coming in, users and being onboarded across lots of applications. We have kind of lots of funding also coming in into the ecosystem, funding applications and infrastructure that we really need. And so kind of just to you know showcase some of the stats, but the interesting part has been how we have been evolving through the years, right? We started in 2018. We started as kind of, hey, we want to use blockchain ourselves. We have a clear need, like we wanted to use it for crowdsourcing, and we didn't see the kind of platform that we can use as developers to really build something that's easy to use, scalable, kind of secure, and is really providing the value to the end user. And so we started in 2018, we launched in 2020, and kind of were growing the ecosystem. And last year, really being focused on developer platform, right? How do we onboard more developers? How do we make sure that the developer tooling is there and is really enabling everyone uh, to build? And kind of this year, what we've seen is now we have a lot of developers, we have a lot of applications, but there's a struggle of kind of going to the next step, right? Really bringing users and kind of building businesses in this ecosystem. And that's why we kind of evolving near into blockchain operating system, right? In our goal to get a billion users. So what is blockchain operating system? It's a common layer for browsing and discovering open web experiences. And it is compatible with any blockchain. Right? It does, it's not just for near blockchain, it works on EVMs, it works on kind of uh, more blockchains as, as time goes. So what problem are we trying to solve? At the core, like we're trying to solve problems not just in Web3, but also in Web2. So in Web2 there is kind of problems we all know and trying to kind of approach with open web with Web3 are censorship, user, kind of uh, like lack of data ownership from the user side, lack of privacy, right? All the data is getting leaked through kind of pixels, through all variety of ways, you know, data getting hacked from the centralized parties that you're giving it to. The user retention is like in Web2 actually, if you're building a new application, is also pretty bad as well. And you have a kind of censorship of what you're leveraging as well. In Web3, few of the core problems that we see is huge fragmentation, right? Right now, there's lots of chains. Each one has its own users, its own applications. There's no common way to discover this, to leverage this, to use this. We have kind of huge re-engagement problems, right? We've had lots of users joining last year before kind of when the bull market was happening, when everybody was excited, and then they left. They haven't really engaged with any of these applications because there's no way to actually bring them back. And finally, the common problems are things like onboarding, right? Right now, it's still in Web3, it's really hard to get uh, to start using applications. You need to you know, install or set up wallets. You need to fund them. You need to figure out what to use. You have similar problems in Web2 where you have lots of accounts everywhere. You need to like, you know, have a password manager or something to like, manage all that. It's kind of completely disjointed. You have distribution problem, right? How do you get your application in Web2 or Web3 to get in front of the users, right? You have lots of kind of compliance issues, com complexity in building all this. You have problem around, you have mobile, you have web, you potentially have different platforms. You need to build for all of them. You need to support and maintain different environments. All of these are problems we're trying to address with a holistic view of blockchain operating system. It's kind of think of it as operating systems in, you know, we had before, which would be Windows or iOS or Android, which were abstracting the hardware, the kind of the things that run on the device, and really bringing users on board. And so similar idea here, we're abstracting the blockchain, abstracting the complexity, and bringing users into one platform. So how does this work, right? It kind of a layer of, a uh, set of layers that are pretty much creating the blockchain operating system. It's blockchains at the bottom, right? Ethereum, Near, Avalanche, 
poly, pol Polygon, Polkadot, all of them. It's middleware, right? It's ability to create kind of unified view of the data across all of them. It's meta transaction layers that allow to submit transactions on users' behalf. It's kind of lots of different um, infrastructure. It's user interfaces, and I'll talk about that. And it's wallets and kind of fast onboarding that we do. And all of this needs to be decentralized. All of this needs to be user-owned. There should not be uh, points of failure. So zooming in a little bit more, when we talk about data platform kind of this middleware, it contains all of the pieces that you need to build rich applications, right? It's not just data. It's also ability to stream, kind of receive notifications, you know, create search, create all of this uh, kind of important components that we used to in Web2, right? You're used to having search. You're used to have notifications. And you have completely missing Web3. On the front end side, kind of the innovation that happens here is really going away from a centralized front ends and you know, mobile apps to a decentralized front ends that are stored on the blockchain. The source code of the interface is stored on the blockchain, and now it renders in your front end, be that a website, an application, a TV potentially, right? It can be rendered there for you specifically as a user. So with the context of your account, with the context of your assets, with the context of your data. So it's not rendered on the back end somewhere which you know, knows all your data. It's rendered for the user. And that's a pretty powerful innovation that actually also simplifies how to build applications and uh, really creates a very rich environment. And finally, on top of it, we call them gateways. It's a way you actually interface with all of the stack. And so you can think of it as like pre-installing this operating system into different places. So today I'll talk about near.org, but this can actually live in wallets, in browsers, in the applications themselves. And so the kind of core thing, if you leave this with one idea, is that for a long time, decentralization, right, using blockchain, kind of building decentralized applications meant that you are lacking distribution. That meant that you have highly fragmented, highly complicated way to onboard users. And so with the blockchain operating system, we're solving that. Now, actually, decentralization is helping with distribution because you can have all those different places where this, your application and your functionality will be now accessible. So what does this mean for enterprises, right? This means that now you can grow existing website app and integrate Web3 directly into it. You can have pretty much Web3 embedded into your brand uh, with your brand without actually needing to build all of that complex kind of application. You don't need to hire a huge Web3 team. You can actually integrate that directly. It means it's easier for you to onboard your existing users already. They don't need to buy crypto and think about it. They can start using, for example, secondary marketplaces for you know, uh, brand design brands. It can be loyalty programs for sports. All of those things can actually come in, in without this users needing to understand the crypto setup, wallets, all of those things. It's easier to maintain and build, right? Because now you don't need to like, create all of that from scratch. You can use existing components. And it works multi-chain. You have the optionality to use Ethereum apps. You have the optionality to onboard uh, kind of MetaMask users or other chain users really easily without needing to, again, building this infrastructure yourself. For builders, it's the fastest development environment, right? It's faster than Web2 because you don't need to get scaffolding. You don't need to set up like uh, hosting. You don't need to pay for that. You just build your you know, application, pull some components from existing stuff, and launch it. It's all in JavaScript. You can you know, find every single, like anything you see, you can look up how it's implemented and kind of build your own version of that. And it has built-in social, it has built-in identity, it has built-in payments. So you can build actually pretty rich applications that you couldn't before in Web2 without stringing lots of APIs and actually like uh, having a, a fair bit of complexity around it. So front-ends and back-ends now are served from blockchain. You don't have this complexity anymore. Finally, for individuals, it's community commerce, right? It's ability to come in in one place and find all of the opportunities, all of the interactions, collaborations in one place. It's easy to discover. You go near the door, you search for games, you search for applications you want to find, and it's universal social features. And the best thing, it's all live. It's all on near the dark today. And uh, this is not just Web3 promises, it's Web3 delivered. So you can go to near.org. There's a kind of common experience. You can see the social. You can like, use some apps. You can see news. You can kind of interact with people. And so 
Um, kind of one of the core functionality is discovering. So you can go and see what are the apps already there. There's apps across you know, DeFi, gaming, uh, NFTs. There's apps on Ethereum. There's apps on Layer 2s, on Arbitrum, on a few other chains. So like all of this is already live right now. You can develop. So anything you see, you can click fork. And you will drop in directly into a code editor where you can start hacking together. You can publish it, and it's available right away to all the users of this platform. And uh, anybody else can then go and remix it as well. And finally, you can connect with people, right? And more and more social features are launching here. So this creates kind of the network, the ecosystem, and the community. Finally, it comes with like the new project we launched on top of this platform is called Near Horizon, which is helping you as a builder, as a startup, to actually um, create and accelerate your startup. Right? It allows you to find contributors, to match with backers, to find services, kind of all of this in an open kind of marketplace way. So it comes with the fastest onboarding on the web. It's not just faster than Web3, it's faster than Web2. It's one-time onboarding with email. You get an account. You use Face ID to create a cryptographic key on your device, and you're ready to go. And you can start posting. You can start pretty much interacting with uh, all of the applications right away. You don't need to pay transaction fees initially. So this is what we have. So you can sign up today, near.org, sign up, and uh, try it out. And just to finish off, so near started as a blockchain, but it's not a blockchain. Only it's data platform. It's all the tooling. It's multi-chain interoperability. It's social graph. It's composable front ends. It's fastest onboarding. So it's all what we call a blockchain operating system. So thank you, and uh, check out the next talk by Alex.